Hi guys, it's Jess and welcome back to another reading vlog. It is week two of Fortnite Frights now and I've started this vlog a little bit late. It is Tuesday so it's like day three of the second week of Fortnite Frights. Uh, just because Sunday I was working, Monday I was working all day and I haven't really had the chance to film anything or read anything actually but... I did manage to finish The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones yesterday and yeah, um, if you watched my five star predictions video last month, this book was included in the list of books that I thought were going to be five stars and initially when I started reading this it was really really good but in the end, it kind of dropped the ball for me a little bit, actually. Um, so the first half of this book was really, really good. Like the atmosphere that was created uh, through the writing, uh, this brooding, slow burning, suspenseful kind of atmosphere really hooked me. I really, really liked it. And there are some scenes from that first half that just really really stand out to me and there are some great moments of body horror which just absolutely shocked me when I read them and I was just like what the fuck and there were just some really good scenes that felt almost dreamlike actually as well and I just really really liked the writing and I really liked the first half and I was really invested in the story and these characters and what was going on and I thought it was going to be really tense and it was going to have my heart in my mouth but then the second half the pacing just kind of slowed right down and not a lot really happened actually and it was also really jarring how it kept jumping from perspectives and sometimes it wasn't always clear what was going on and I think maybe that's kind of the point I think it's a little bit speculative and it's kind of up to the reader to interpret what's happening but the ending just fell really flat and I when I finished it I was just like oh okay then so it's that like and I, I love the concept of the story and I loved this idea of these four guys being haunted by something really terrible that they caused in the past and I loved that aspect to it and I thought the way that this one had been done was really unique um, and I loved the American Indian side to the story I loved delving into the life of an American Indian and what their culture is all about something I've never read before and it was just really really interesting so there were some aspects of it that I did enjoy but the second half just kind of ruined the experience for me it didn't ruin it that's a bit harsh but it just didn't live up to the expectations that I had for it but like I said it does have some really great moments and the first half is worth the read alone so I ended up giving this one 3.5 stars it's still good but just it wasn't that five star read for me unfortunately and <laughs> I have literally just finished An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen so this is my spooktober read for the prompt to read a book with red on the cover so I've kind of not been participating in spooktober that much the last two weeks because I have been focusing more on Fortnite frights but this was the last book on that TBR and I did finish it today and again this one's a three star read it's not particularly amazing I enjoyed it the middle half was a little bit boring and it was very repetitive in places but I liked the concept again I think I enjoy books that have very unique and interesting concepts and that's kind of what saved this book for me otherwise I think it would have been a two star just because in the end it was pretty average and the way it ended was just really predictable and there was a lot of it that I didn't like like I've just said the repetitiveness and 
uh, the jarring perspectives again I don't think it was really needed I don't know like maybe you'll disagree with me on this but I just didn't enjoy the fact that it kept flicking from first to second person and I didn't really see the need for it um, but yeah it was okay I'm just glad to finally have this out of the way because I have been struggling to get through this <laughs> Well, not struggling to get through it, but struggling to find the time and the motivation to read this because I have been reading other stuff that has been better, to be honest. So that's that one finished. So I have three books left to read for Fortnite Frights. And one of them is Frankenstein, and that's an audiobook. And I'm hoping to start that tomorrow. But right now, wherever I put it... <laughs> um, I want to start reading Mexican Gothic, so this is to complete the prompt to read a book with green on the cover and to also read a book by a POC author. So this one's only recently come out in the last two months or so and there's been a lot of hype surrounding it. Don't really know too much of what it's about, but I've heard that it's quite slow to start with. It's one of those slow burn horrors that... Uh, you know, builds up to the really good stuff towards the end. So I'm going to see how I get on with this one. And this is another one of my five star predictions for this year. So I'm interested to see if it will be five stars or not, because I know a lot of people have been loving this and have been giving it five stars. But I do know I have seen the odd review that's just not good. I don't know, that happens with every book anyway, but yeah. So I want to start this this afternoon, hopefully, if not tonight after work. Hi guys, so my last video ended really abruptly because it just stopped for some reason and I didn't even notice, but um, I've read one chapter of this so far and I've only read one chapter because I realised the time and I had to go and eat and now I need to go and get ready for work so just one chapter this afternoon <laughs> which is pretty embarrassing but I have been reading An Anonymous Girl so there's that yeah so like I said I have to start work now not now but soon <laughs> in about half an hour so I need to go and get ready even though I'm one chapter into this I'm liking the vibes it's giving me I'm loving the setting, it's set in Mexico City and this girl, her cousin, has uh, fallen ill, so they believe um, and so this girl's being sent to try and help her cousin, save her from being put in a mental asylum and I believe that house is haunted from what I read about this book previously I don't know but um yeah I'm liking it so far and I'm only one chapter in so I'm jumping the gun a little bit but yeah we'll see how we get on with this I'll probably try and read a little bit more of this tonight after work um but right now <laughs> I really need to get a move on hi everyone it's Wednesday uh and I read a little bit of this last night, but I'm still not too far into it. I still haven't reached page 100. Uh, I read a couple of chapters thinking I was going to sit up for quite a while and read. And I read about two or three chapters and then I fell asleep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm still liking it, though. Not much has happened but I feel like this book is setting itself up to be really creepy. That's the expectations that I have for this anyway. But um, today is a very eventful day today because I am getting a tattoo. <laughs> um, I got a tattoo last year and that was my first one and it was quite small and it really hurt, but... I mean, if you have tattoos, you will understand that once you've had one, even though it hurt, 
you want more. So I'm booked in to have a tattoo done at 1.30 today, which is about three hours away now. So I need to be leaving the house in about two hours. I'm going to be getting the bus. I could drive, but there's not really any parking near there. So I'm going to get the bus today. And that's going to give me a chance to listen to an audiobook. So I wanted to read Frankenstein this year and I have it on audio. So I figured that I would listen to it today and get the bus so that I can just sit and listen to it. And the bus journey is probably like half an hour each way. So I don't know how long I would have to listen to Frankenstein, probably about an hour. But I just want to get it started um and I'm off work for the next two days so I could get it finished within the next two days and then that's another book ticked off my Fortnite Frights uh TBR and then tonight I think I will sit down and try and read at least a hundred or so pages of this because yeah I have the year of the witching that I need to get to as well <laughs> I don't know I've been very ambitious this month but I have been doing pretty well so maybe we could squeeze these last three books in before the end of Saturday who knows but yeah so that's the plan for today I need to go and edit a video right now I have my vlog that, from last week that I need to edit and get uploaded and I did try to get that done yesterday but it just didn't work out so I'm gonna do that this morning before I have to go and get my tattoo done. I'm very excited, but I'm also very nervous because the little one I had only took half an hour. This one, I'm booked in for three, three hours. Um, I'm having it on my thigh though, so I don't think it's gonna be too painful. My last one was on my ankle, which was pretty painful. So if I can do that one, I could probably cope with this. We'll see, but um, I'm going to go and do my stuff now and I will see you all in a little while. Hi guys, so I've just got back from getting my tattoo and I'm not going to show you it now because it's a bit horrible and gunky so I will show you tomorrow when it's a lot more cleaner once I've washed it and it looks a bit nicer um, but it looks really good, I really really like it, the artist did such a great job of just capturing what I wanted um, and it was a little bit painful but this is my second tattoo and the first one that I had was on the inside of my ankle and this one is not as bad as the ankle was in terms of pain so I was able to just kind of sit through it and zone out and plan a few things, think about my novel a little bit. So I listened to Frankenstein uh, for a little bit while I was on the buses. Uh, I had to get two buses, one into the city centre and then one from the city centre to the tattoo place. So I had about 45 minutes listening time either way. Uh, I don't know how far I am into it. I think I'm on like chapter four, chapter five, something like that. But um, it's hard to listen to audiobooks sometimes when I'm doing things because I do tend to like zone out and start thinking about other stuff so I have not really taken much in of the story um so I will probably have to physically read the book at some point but I'm going to listen to a little bit more of that tomorrow and tonight I'm going to sit down and read some more of Mexican Gothic hopefully get a decent chunk of that done um yeah that's all I wanted to talk about uh very excited to show you guys my tattoo 
so keep watching for that i hope you like it just as much as i do <laughs> um uh, yeah i'm gonna have a hot chocolate now and i'm gonna get some food inside me because i do have a bit of a headache and today's just been one of those days where <laughs> i've just not stopped doing stuff so i'm looking forward to having a bit of a sit down now and just chilling out it's the morning after and this is my new tattoo and I'm so in love with it. I just think it is so pretty. I just think she's done a really good job of the shading and of the line work. And I just think it is absolutely gorgeous. And it's funny because like I thought it was going to hurt a lot, but it actually didn't hurt too much actually I mean I've had my ankle tattooed as well which is this one here and that one really hurt but this I hardly felt it so if you want a tattoo like if you've never had a tattoo before and you want a tattoo I would recommend going for the thigh because <laughs> honestly it just it didn't really like it still hurt but it wasn't unbearable if you know what I mean so I'm super happy with that. I just have to make sure I look after it over the next few weeks. But yeah, it should should look really good once it's all healed. So yeah, I'm super happy with my new tattoo and I just can't wait to show it off to everybody and get my legs out. It's kind of annoying that it's winter now and I can't really do that, but I'm wearing shorts today just so I can get some air to it. And so it heals a little bit before I have to put my trousers on for work tomorrow. Because that is going to rub. I know that for certain. Um, yeah, I don't really have any plans today other than to just try and read Mexican Gothic. I don't know what my hair is doing today. Oh my gosh. I have just woke up, uh, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I read a little bit more of Mexican Gothic last night. But I've still not got past page 100. Um, I fell asleep again, um, so today I'm going to dedicate the afternoon to reading that. I do need to finish editing my week three reading vlog, um, so I will do that later tonight, but I just want to prioritise getting this book finished. Probably not today, but at some point in the next few days, <laughs> hopefully before the end of the month would be nice. Um, Definitely don't think I'm going to get the Year of the Witch in started um, before the end of the month. But that's okay because I can just read it next month. It's fine. Um, so yeah, that's my plan for today. The only other thing I really need to do, which I'm going to do now, is meal prep for later. Um, yeah. Let's go and do that. So I'm making a chicken casserole and I'm going to slow cook it. So what you want to do is you want to put loads of chopped onions in the pan with some butter because onions are better with butter in my opinion. And then you just get some boneless chicken thighs and you just fry them until they're like brown on the outside. You don't want to cook them all the way through. You can do if you want to but... They're going to be cooked in the slow cooker anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're still raw inside. And then you just put them in the slow cooker with some mushrooms and some carrots and celery. You can choose whatever veg you want and some chicken stock as well. Normally I'd put potatoes in, but I'm not going to bother today. And then we just put two bay leaves on the top like that. Put the lid on and it should be good to go by dinner time. So it's nearly three o'clock and I am about 130 pages into Mexican Gothic now and yeah it is pretty slow at the moment but I'm still really interested in the story because I am loving the atmosphere that the writer has created in this book. We've got a creepy cemetery, we've got a potentially haunted house 
and even though it's kind of slow it's the kind of build up I like with these kind of stories and we're just getting little glimpses here and there of these like supernatural things that are happening I don't know if it is ghosts or whatever but I'm just really really enjoying this book and so I could understand why people would be bored through like the first third of it but honestly I'm not I'm loving it I just really really can't wait to see what happens next and I don't know if I explained it but we are following this character called Naomi I think that's how you say it I have googled it and I think it is Naomi or Noemi I think it's Noemi actually um and uh she's gone to this house owned by this rich English family because her cousin is married to this guy called Virgil Doyle and she lives in this house and she's been unwell and they are saying that she's had tuberculosis but Noemi suspects that it's not tuberculosis and that it's something else and she's starting to think that the house is haunted just because of some of the experiences she's had while she's there herself and just the way her cousin Catalina is acting um, and she's trying to convince the Doyle family that it's not TB and that Catalina has something else wrong with her but they don't believe her obviously um and yeah that's pretty much where I'm at in the story um and I'm just I'm just very excited I've said this already but I'm just very excited to see where the story goes to see how it ends I love everything about this so far I just mm, I just can't I can't wait <laughs> So I've just hit page 200 of Mexican Gothic and I'm really enjoying this book. I love it so much. The atmosphere is just amazing. Like it is written so well and it's, it reads like one of the classic Gothic horrors, you know, like Frankenstein and Dracula. It just has that kind of vibe to it that kind of prose that I really really like and I just yeah I just love everything about this and I just love uh Noemi as a character as well again I apologize if I'm saying her name wrong I did google how to pronounce it but uh <laughs> yeah um but I love her as a character she's really strong-willed she knows what she wants and she just you know She's not afraid of saying what she thinks and standing up for herself, and I love that. Um, and she's very good at holding her own against the men in this book as well, which I really like. Um, and I love how passionate she is about making sure her cousin is okay and getting to the bottom of whatever is going on. And I love the mystery element as well in this book. Everything so far is just perfect so my five star prediction uh hopefully is going to be bang on with this book um and uh i've been reading all afternoon and i've been listening to the playlist that the author has made on spotify for this book and listening to that while reading has really enhanced the experience. Like I don't normally listen to music when I read, especially music with lyrics, because I do get a bit distracted by the music sometimes, but it really amplifies the reading experience for this book. So I would definitely recommend listening to that 
while reading this. It's got some great songs, some absolute bangers that I've added onto my own playlist as well. So yeah, I'm just having a great afternoon reading this. I've been feeling really rubbish today, um, but this has just really cheered me up. So I'm going to see how much I can get done uh, before five o'clock. And the... I've only got about 100 pages left to read, so maybe I could finish this tonight. I don't know, we'll see, but um, I'm going to go back to reading this, and I will see you all in a little bit. everybody so it's Sunday now which means it's the end of Fortnite Frights the readathon is over it ended yesterday on Halloween and I just wanted to tell you guys how I did so yesterday I finished Mexican Gothic and it wasn't the five star book I was hoping it would be it's still four stars, it was really good and it went in a direction I was not expecting and I really liked that. It's about this haunted house but with a twist and it was very unique, it felt really different and I just, I really really liked it but I don't know, like I feel like there was something missing from it, like it didn't have those wow moments in it those moments that shock me that make me go what the fuck I think there's probably only one moment that made me go what the hell am I reading um but other than that it just didn't have that I don't know like it was still really good and I can't really explain what's missing from it because I don't really know but it just it didn't feel as spectacular to me as I hoped it was going to be but like I said it was still four stars it was still really good I was still really hooked in the story and I love the writing and I love the atmosphere that Silvia Moreno Garcia created and it definitely read like an old style classic you know it read like Dracula it read like Pride and Prejudice you know it had that kind of eeriness to it and that as a realness to it that I really really liked um and I think this book is set in the 1950s um but it definitely felt like it could have been happening in the Victorian times or even earlier. And sometimes I forgot that it was set in Mexico just because she's in this house with this English family. Um, and I think having that Englishness in it just makes it that little bit more weird and that little bit more uh, creepy, I guess. But yeah, I really enjoyed it still and I would really recommend it if you're looking for a spooky book to read. That's not that scary, but it's definitely got those moments where you're like, okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah, really impressed with this one and I'm definitely keen to pick up more of her books. And I know The Gods of Jade and Shadow is a really popular book, so 
definitely keen to see what that's all about in the future. Then yesterday, I also listened to a bit of Frankenstein. Um, and I was meant to be at work yesterday evening. I was meant to work from four until half ten. But my manager messaged me about half one and told me not to come in because it is pretty quiet. So I had the night off, which meant I could get lots of Halloween reading in. Um, and yeah, so I listened to some Frankenstein for about an hour and a half. So I'm about 50% of the way through that audiobook now. And I just listened to it while I was doing the jobs I needed to do, like changing the bed, things like that. I just wanted to get them done. So I didn't have to worry about it this morning because it's NaNoWriMo and I had to get my writing time in. I'm liking it, but I think I need to, I think I've said this already, but I think I need to sit down and physically read Frankenstein for me to fully appreciate it. Just because when I listen to audiobooks, I tend to be listening to them when I'm doing other things and my mind tends to wander quite a lot. So I'm not taking everything in. I mean, Frankenstein, I know of, I know the story anyway, so that helps. But yeah, I'm just not getting the experience that I feel I would have with it if I read it physically. So I'm not like, I think once I've finished the audiobook, I'm not going to give it a rating or anything because I don't think that would be very fair. Um, so I will probably sit down and read it physically at some point in the future. But yeah, I'm enjoying it. I mean, it definitely improved my Halloween experience yesterday, considering it was the deadest Halloween I have ever witnessed. We didn't have any trick-or-treaters. We didn't have any fireworks. There were no street parties or anything. It was just horrendous. <laughs> and then obviously, we got put back into lockdown. Well, no, we're going back into lockdown on Thursday which means my work has to close for four weeks on Thursday, which I am not happy about, not happy about to be honest. Um, but what can you do? So that kind of dampened the mood a little bit and I did struggle to carry on with Frankenstein because I was just constantly thinking about lockdown. Um, but then last night I did also manage to start reading The Year of the Witch Inc by Alexis Henderson. So I'm about 36 pages into this. I'm just about to start chapter three and I don't really have an opinion on this at the minute, but it's very interesting. We're basically following this character called Emmanuel um, and she was born out of wedlock um, and... We're just kind of learning a bit of her backstory, where she's from, uh, what kind of things she likes and what she does and who her friends are. And um, there's also a little bit about the world in this book and, you know, the church and the religion uh, in the story. And I'm just very intrigued to see where this one goes. I think the religious aspect in it is going to be a really interesting factor. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the witch action in this. So yeah, I've got high hopes for this one. This was another five star prediction, but unfortunately Fortnite Frights is over now, so I can't complete this one for that. But I'm going to carry on reading this throughout the month of November. Hopefully I'll get it finished sometime this week. Um, and like I said, my work will be closing on Thursday for four weeks. So if you saw my November TBR video yesterday and I said I wouldn't have a lot of time to read and do NaNoWriMo and work, I'm going to have plenty of time to do everything. So yeah, we will see. But that's the end of this vlog and that's the end of my readathon vlogging in general. I've vlogged for the entire month and I've never done that before. It's been the first time doing it and it's been a lot of hard work um, trying to find the time to film and to read and to make sure I have stuff to say and also to make sure I have the time to edit the vlogs. But yeah, it's been an experience and I've learned a lot and like I said, I've had a lot of fun and I hope you've enjoyed watching along with me seeing my experiences in real time with some of these books um 
And yeah, I just had a lot of fun in general taking part in Spooktober and taking part in Fortnite Frights and it's given me the chance to work through my TBR a bit and to also read some books by authors I probably wouldn't have picked up normally and to just get back into the horror genre as well. I really enjoyed that and it's something I'm going to continue throughout November. So yeah, overall I've had a very good experience and I finished nine of the 11 books on my TBR, which I'm really impressed with. Uh, another solid month of reading. So we'll see what November brings. I'm gonna leave you all here. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched until the end, you're amazing because I know I ramble. Um, leave a cheeky thumbs up if you like this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you all in another video very soon. Bye guys. Thank you.